this is going to be the first video in a series on how to paint your firearm or paint parts of your firearm and in this episode I'm going to discuss some paint options and we'll just start with um, you know on the on the left here uh, over here we've got um, basically a series of aerosol paints, uh, some of the paints I like to use. The Krylon Color Master is a paint I like to use on uh, metal surfaces. Uh, it can be used in a lot of different ways, um, but I prefer to use it on metal-based surfaces. For plastics, I prefer the Krylon Fusion, and that's these two. With the Krylon Fusion, it, uh, it is formulated so if you have a clean plastic surface, there isn't any sanding involved. It adheres to the plastic surface. So it's a paint that's more or less formulated specifically for plastic. So depending upon what I might be painting, I might be using the Color Master if it's metal or some, some other type of material. If it's a plastic, I'm going to use the... Um, uh, Krylon Fusion. Also next to each one of those is its associated uh, clear coat or its top coat. In the case of the Color Master here, um, I have gloss and in the case of the Fusion, I have, um, I don't believe this is uh, gloss or flat, it's just neutral. So if you're going to put a top coat on your paint, you're going to want to match that top coat up. I wouldn't mix and match. I wouldn't use a Color Master with a Krylon Fusion, for example. Now over here, this is um, a Preval aerosol sprayer with, with a bottle. Um, in the event you're selecting paint that uh, does not come in an aerosol can, and Duracoat's a, a good example. You can see this is a uh, a Duracoat uh, uh, bottle of matte black and this is the uh, hardener for the Duracoat. Uh, you can use a Preval sprayer like this. You can mix up your paint with the hardener and put it in here and it's more or less just like you've got a spray paint can. But there's a big caveat with that. These cans spray much better than this Preval. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, the Preval is is fairly good, but it's not quite at the same level as the aerosol can. But it's your only option if you're going to use a Duracoat or a Cerakote paint, something that you need to mix up yourself. So uh, these teaspoons and tablespoons are another item you're going to need if you're using something like the Duracoat. You know, when you're adding Duracoat, you need to add a certain amount of hardener. It's, it's either in tablespoons or teaspoons. So um, you're going to want to have some of these um, that you can consider them disposable. Don't go and steal them from your wife uh, because you're, you'll never get all the paint off of them. So go out and buy some and that'll be part of your paint kit. So I normally have uh, tea, one teaspoon and one tablespoon um, and those are dedicated for my paint kit. Now you can also um, go to an autom automotive paint uh, supply center and get paint mixed up if there's a specific color that you're looking for and you can get the hardener for it and you can use the uh, Preval as, as, as well. Now the last two items here I'm going to talk about is um, an adhesion promoter and this is a, uh, a wax and grease remover. So the wax and grease remover uh, would be used first and foremost before you start uh, any type of, of, of prep work on your product. So let, let's say I was going to paint this item. Um, I would uh, use my wax and grease remover liberally over this to remove any evidence of silicone, wax, grease, dirt, oil, oil from your fingers, and, and so on. That would be the first thing that I would do. 
after that I would uh, you know depending upon if it was plastic and I was using a, a fusion or a color master um, it just it depends on the type of paint you're using uh, we would either sand or we would not sand that particular surface under most circumstances you're going to rough up the surface before you apply any paint to it um, I'll discuss sandpaper and, and other materials in in the next video but let's just say I'm, I'm gonna paint this with fusion and I'm not gonna sand it so the first thing I would do is I would use the wax and grease remover to remove any contaminants and once that's dry I would uh, put on several coats of the adhesion promoter. The adhesion promoter basically helps the paint stick to the surface. Now, do you have to use adhesion promoter? No. You can get good results without adhesion promoter, but adhesion promoter helps quite a bit. So it's always something that I include in the steps when I'm, when I'm painting a, 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 a product. So there are other paints on the market. Um, I'm just highlighting Krylon here. Um, for, for stuff that you can buy off the shelf in an aerosol can, in my opinion, since I've used pretty much all of them, the Krylon is probably the best paint. It's the most durable. It has the best spray nozzles. It goes on the best. Um, it dries quickly and they've got different formulas for different types of materials and a, a wide variety of colors so um, you can see the fusion for example they have a whole line of camouflage colors which are ultra flat colors and they're designed specifically for doing camouflage on on plastic you know gun parts for example so that's that's really nice uh, rust-oleum is is another paint i've used i don't like it as much as krylon um, and the other brands that are out there, I, I just I don't use them. I've just had either uh, the the spray head issues, or paint drying issues, or the paint not laying on or running, um, a whole gauntlet of different problems. So if, if you're going to go with something aerosol wise, these are your best choices, and and they are you know definitely very durable. Now, Duracoat um, is touted as a very robust, durable firearm coat coating. And, you know, Duracoat now is actually available in an aerosol can, a specialized aerosol can that uh, uh, has an internal premixed amount of hardener, and you have to puncture that and then shake up the can, and I think you have 48 or 72 hours to use the contents of the can. After that, it's it's not usable. So once you puncture the hardener and mix it in with the paint inside of the can, you've got to use it within a set period of time. Now, I haven't used that, so I can't, I can't comment on how well that works. I've seen it on um, uh, their website. Uh, it looks interesting. But on that note, um, I don't particularly like Duracoat uh, for several reasons. Um, one, it's very expensive, and you get a small amount of paint, four ounces. Two, it isn't very durable, um, at least the, 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 the stuff that you don't bake on. It, it's, not very, it's not any more durable than Krylon. And three, it covers very poorly. It, it, if you're not extremely careful with it, it'll run. And that's, that's a whole, whole other issue that I'm going to cover in a later video on actually the techniques of painting. It is not forgiving uh, at all. Um, if you're used to painting with Krylon and you switch over to using a Preval with, with uh, Duracoat, you're going to get sags and runs. The, the paint just is very difficult to work with. So, do I use Duracoat? I've used it for, I've done probably two dozen different parts and firearms with using Duracoat. I, I won't use Duracoat anymore. Um, another option is Cerakote. 
uh, Cerakote is a much more durable uh, product and I've not personally used any Cerakote products um, but the professional Cerakote stuff is normally baked on so there you can do Cerakote at home to a certain extent but I don't know what the results would be with, with using Cerakote without you know actually uh, curing the it in, in an oven so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those two firearm finishes uh, at this point so uh, this is going to pretty much wrap up episode one on um, some paint options um, what I like to use and uh, different ways to um, um, you know get your project started